Good evening, sir. How are you? I'm fine, sir. Thank you. You have an interview scheduled on 18th. Yes, sir. 18th, four noon session. Last day. Yes, sir. The last day. Okay. So uh, I don't suggest you that we should have a formal one to one. I think it should be an informal conversation in which I will suggest you a few things. And in case you want to ask some questions, I'll give yes. the reply for those. Uh, no? Yes. So in general, I can I have expected questions and that I think I can discuss, for example, why you want to become an IAS officer yes. and a uh, few more questions I will ask. This is your second attempt. You are from Lady Shiriram. Then you have some hobbies, India, South Korea. So tell us more about India, South Korea relationship. So India South Korea has a multi sectoral relationship spanning the historical linkages as well. So, in the field of history and culture, it is said that a prominent South Indian queen belonged to the Ayutha kingdom, which largely translates into the Ayodhya kingdom from India. And if we talk about the contemporary relations, uh, India has played a very important role in peacemaking during the Korean War. and after that, India has expanded its ties with South Korea in sectors such as defense technology. There has been uh, certain technology sharing and mutual collaborations, as well as in various multilateral fora, uh, for instance, the G20 forum. Tell us uh, what all are the major uh, items we trade with South Korea? Uh, so, first of all, the automobile, uh, because uh, automobile and technology related sector, because Samsung is a particular South Korean company, which has a huge market in India. Uh, and then this is the only one I can think of at the moment, sir. Uh, with respect to South Korea, there has been a corruption case uh, against the head of the state. Are you aware of that? I'm sorry, sir, I'm unaware of it, but I'll read up about it. Yes. Okay. You mentioned that you are a debater also in winner regional KVS basketball. So you play basketball? Yes, sir. So how, how is the performance of India's basketball team? So when we take India in perspective of South Asia, it is one of the top performing countries. We have even won the South Asian Basketball Association Championships in the past. Uh, however, when taken into greater context of the entire world, India has had a below par performance. There have been individual players who have made their mark, like Mr. Satnam Singh Bhavna, uh, Bhamra and Sanjana Yadav, who have played in the NBA level in the US as well. However, as a team, uh, the performance is yet to improve. And what all are the uh, initiatives being taken by the government to improve basketball? Any specific uh, scheme? Yes, sir. so first of all, the Kelo India Youth Games, which are ongoing, basketball is an important part of that. And then various uh, competitive tournaments like the national championship as well as state championships are being organized. And one very important recent initiative was that the government has collaborated with certain foreign agencies as well as certain private institutions in India like GSW and Reliance to open world-class basketball infrastructure in uh, Delhi. Do you still pursue uh, playing basketball? Uh, so I haven't played in a couple of months, but till college, I was a regular basketball player. And you graduated in which year? So 2020. 2020. And what are you doing since last three years? Uh, so initially, I interned with a heritage conservation organization called India Lost and Found, after which I started preparing for civil services. Okay. And why you started uh, preparing for civil services? Why you want to join the services? So it's been a childhood dream of mine. I wanted to uh, contribute positively towards my country in whatever capacity I can. This is one very important value which I have grown up with. And growing up, I realized that civil services is one of the most impactful services in the country. So that was the starting point of this dream. Gradually, uh, during my college years, I also realized that I have an academic interest in the field of international relations. And I would like to pursue diplomacy as a career, therefore civil services. So you opted as for foreign services as your first choice, right? Yes, sir. That is my first choice. Okay. But don't you think that uh, 
of lately we have seen that the world is moving towards deglobalization so do you think that there is a potential of all in services or are being more inclusive world or more world in silos so to answer the first part of your question i would humbly put on a different perspective here i wouldn't call it deglobalization i would say that the pace of globalization has slowed down owing to certain recent developments uh, be it the global financial slowdown or covid-19 or even the recent russia ukraine war uh, to answer the second part however i definitely do not think that the world is going into silos we see various forums of multilateral cooperation and various sectors of multilateral cooperation throughout even times like covid where the closing down of borders had become a prominent feature the countries collaborated through various different different initiatives from technology to vaccine alliances etc and india itself as as a country who has the ambition to become the vishwa guru and who sees the world in terms of vasudeva kutumbakam india has espoused the reform of multilateralism and has been a forefront in various multilateral institutions the recent g20 presidency being a case in point no but on the one side you are saying g20 but on the other side we have seen that russia against which the un has put the sanctions became the head of uh, united nations security council so can you please repeat the question i could yeah i was saying that you are saying that the international forum in which for example the g20 is there and we are not moving towards deglobalization but uh, i was just asking how how it will be justified that on the one side uh, russia has initiated a war against ukraine and there are a lot of sanctions which the west western countries has put but on the other side the russia became the chair of united nations security council act is one of the great paradoxes of international relations that national interests trump everything so when russia invaded ukraine definitely it, it was in its perceived national interest however uh, russia becoming the chair of the united nations security council that just shows that the world is somehow able to dehyphenate issues uh, for instance the russia ukraine war and the global response is at one place however a multilateral structure of the united nations and certain procedures are there in the other place and both the situation both the procedures are being followed at their own pace so i think that is like a parallel development going on right now one of your hobby is gone paintings right tell us more about that so gone paintings uh, are the folk paintings belonging to the gone tribes in fact it has recently gotten a gi tag the gone paintings of dindori uh these in structure uh, are similar to the madhubani folk paintings they uh, if we talk about certain prominent features they include vibrance of colors which originates from the gond belief system that a good image brings good luck to the people therefore it has vibrant colors and a very unique feature is that it has online work it has a duality of outlines which is rarely seen in any other folk painting of india good you have mentioned one of your hobby is blogging yes i uh, have you heard the word uh, web 3.0 uh yes i have heard the word what is that uh i'm sorry so i'm unable to recall the basics at the moment uh, i've just i'm just vaguely aware about it right okay okay tell us how how blogging has uh, decreased the accountability perspective how it has decreased you need to debate on the topic that blogging has decreased the accountability of individuals so may i have a couple of moments to brainstorm here yes yeah, sir sure. so may i begin yeah please uh sir so to debate on the topic that blogging has decreased accountability perspective of people i would like to state three basic points first of all since blogging is an easily accessible medium which uh, on which regulations and checks are still in a developmental phase therefore the problem of misinformation of fake news is very easy to spread through blogs so that has a negative impact on the accountability the second is that it is very easy to actually create propaganda and to create malicious uh, uh, statements about other people through their blog they there are very basic and few checks worldwide uh, related to that so that also negatively impacts the entire accountability scenario and the third is that information overload can also happen 
through various blogs to the people. Therefore, the ability to judge and process so much info information at one point that gets compromised. Okay. Anything else which you want to share with us, Nakshi? So this is all I can think of at the moment. Okay. Thank you.